Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany Retired Librarian turned homeschool mom and in this video we're going to do a Christmas film comparison. So we're going to be looking at Miracle on 34th Street. So we're going to be looking at the original which I believe and I'll pull this up on the IMDb came out in 1947 and then we're going to be looking at the 1994 version. So I'm obviously more familiar with this film but let's have a look at both of these. So the big difference now this is the classic. Most people prefer this film and it is very good and far more realistic than this film. So um, the prime uh, purpose of this plot of both films, they stick to the same point, is you have this woman and her daughter who are kind of, they're anti-make-believe. They're not anti-Christmas, they're anti-make-believe. She works for Macy's. Um, in this film. Um, in the modern film they couldn't get Macy's to give permission so they call the film uh, the major department store Kohl's. So the same point. She works for this company, this giant department store. They do a parade every year and the normal Santa they use turns out to be a drunk. Um, they find what actually is played as the real Santa Claus yes, the actual Santa Claus, he plays the department store Santa. He becomes their department store Santa. One night he is, he's basically harassed and then uh, by the person he replaced and he hits them and he's basically, he's gonna be arrested. He says he's Santa Claus. They lock him up in an asylum. Um, gentleman who's an attorney, who's kind of, who's a neighbor of the woman who's and I believe the names let's see if the names stay the same um let's see no the names are different um in the original the woman's name is uh actually no it does say the same Doris they change it slightly they call it call her Doris Walker in the original and it's Dory Walker in the remake and then the little girl's name remains I believe the same Susan and then I think they call her Susie in no they keep the name so the daughter's name remains the same um, but essentially he's put in a nut house they basically call she calls her I think in the modern one she calls him because she's become close to him to su basically um, support the Santa Claus in the original, he's been close to her, close, to, he, he's close to him already. So the, I think they changed the name. In the original, the lawyer's name was, um, wait, assuming this is the, yeah, was uh, Fred Galley. In the modern one, they changed his name to Brian Bedford. So he's an attorney. Um, again, in the original, the attorney has befriended the Santa Claus uh, himself. In the film, why he's befriended him, she, Mrs. Walker, calls him and to essentially support him in court. So they go through Hall. Basically, it's an insanity hearing. So it's not a jury trial or anything. They're trying to prove to the judge he's not nuts. And at the end of both, both of this huge court drama, um, one of the major difference is the um, they play up in the original the fact that the judge is up for re-election and that's why he can't really rule he, his campaign manager pretty much says you need to go on vacation get the heck away from this court or you're not going to get re-elected because you cannot rule against Santa Claus and the entire city is going to hate you. They cut that angle in this. Um, he's still an old man. You don't get to see his grandchildren in this. In the original, you see his grandchildren and his grand, his wife and his grandkids are pissed off at him because he's possibly gonna put Santa Claus in the nut house. So um, the other, I think one of the major differences, is the prosecutor, in the original, they bring his son up to testify that his father told him that this is Santa Claus. In this, in the modern film, um, they bring his wife who testifies that again she him and her both the prosecutor and his wife told their children 
that this is Santa Claus. <laughs> so that's another major difference. The huge difference is how it ends, um, and particularly how they prove it. So in the original, what happens is you get a scene of the uh, mail carrier. And again, this is true, they get letters to Santa Claus every year. And the postman stares at it and it's like, you know, it's been in the news that this guy's um, going up for, basically he's being, he says he's Santa Claus. And they have a bunch of letters down in their mailroom that they would like to get rid of. And they're like, you know what, send them to the courthouse. It's like, if he's Santa Claus, we want to get rid of these things. Not that they believe he's Santa Claus, they just want to get rid of all these letters. So they send them to the courthouse and the, uh, basically the defense attorney is, who's defending Santa Claus is told about this and they pretty much, he tells the judge this is, he, he had no idea this was happening. He was not involved in this as well at all. The post office did this themselves. Um, basically they pile a bunch of these Santa Claus letters that had been brought to the courthouse on the judge's desk. And essentially he uses this as an excuse to save his skin. It's like, if the post office, which can't lie and has to deliver the mail, that's part of their charter. No, they're not a government agency. Um, and yes, at the time they were actually making money. They don't anymore because Congress is evil um, and screwed things up badly. Uh, moving on. And that's how they get Santa Claus off, essentially. In this film, and I always kind of liked this, but really upside down. Um, <laughs> Essentially, the prosecutor kind of has an argument with the judge who's going to rule against him. And it's like, he doesn't need you being pissed off. He needs a miracle. Well, he's waving around his money. He's calling the judge, basically. Your Santa Claus was ruined by money and commercialism. And essentially, he sees on his bill as the judge walks out the words that are, in fact, on the dollar bill, in God we trust. So he gets Susan to give the judge a Christmas card with the God we trust on the dollar bill. The judge uses that. The fact that the government, um, it's actually not done by the Treasury Department anymore. It's done by um, a different department, I think, according to IMED. But again, the Treasury Department, which is the Department of the Government, the government which there is of the people, they put their trust in God that you cannot physically prove. So the state of New York can basically um, except that there is a Santa Claus in the way of Kris Kringle. So that's how they prove it in this film. There's actually quite a few other differences. This film plays up the romance angle a lot in this film. It also plays up more the deviance between the two competing stores, which is again in, it's in this film, but it, it's not as much. And in this film, it's real. There is, in fact, a competition between Macy's and this other store. Obviously, I don't know what this other store is, and Macy's wins, because um, they lasted longer. I'm pretty sure Macy's is gone now as well, um, because the mall has died, and department stores are dying. Because, again, um, 90s. Well, this is the 2000s. The malls are closing. Moving on. But they play up the evilness of this. In fact, they have... The attack on uh, Santa Claus in this film is deliberate. Um, basically, the guy comes up behind him and is calling him essentially a pedophile. And then he hits him and then the guy plays, basically, he's not really hurt, but he plays up to it because he's been paid by the other store's people who, honestly, who on earth are the actors who were playing them? Um, Jane Levies, who's known for Frasier, and then who is the other actor here? who is playing um, Ed, uh, J.T. Welsh. So Ed Collins is the name of the character. What the heck is he doing? I know him from somewhere. Um, he's, in, he's been in quite a few things. Um, looked like he was in a, he was a prosecutor in a few good men. He was in Good, good Morning Vietnam. So he's done quite a few things. Um, nonetheless, they play the, um, the kind of bad guys in this. Well, no, sorry. Jane Levy's is playing off as James Reimer, so sorry. That's the right guy. They're playing basically the henchmen of the other store. Um, J.T. Walsh plays their boss. So, um, and yeah, he's been in several things. <laughs> Quite a few things. Um, he's, he's been in NCIC. I don't remember what the heck I know him from, from but nonetheless. Uh, moving on. Then, 
So that's the other thing. They play up this more violent kind of thing. It also plays up with that both these same characters are in support of Santa Claus at the end. So they play that up a lot more. Again, they play up the romance level, the romance angle, far more than, you know, they did in 1947 because the Hayes Code was still in effect and this was a family movie. So, um, in fact, this, I'm surprised to see, in connection to some of the other films I've done, the other another film I've done this year, the mother is played by Maureen O'Hara. So Maureen O'Hara also plays the mother in the original Parent Trap. Um, the other film that I know her from much later in life was Only the Lonely, where she is actually playing the mother of John Candy. Um, if I could ever get a hold of that, I don't know if I'd review it on here. It's a little bit more adult. It's, I think it might be a John Hughes film. Strangely enough, this is done by his production company. If you're not aware of who the heck John Hughes is, um, you are living under a rock. Uh, please be aware of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, The Breakfast Club. He was the one who was writing both the Home Alone films as well. Uh, I'd like to mention half a dozen other things. Uh, he's a very well-known Chicago writer. Um, but moving on. But this one, yeah, it plays up the romance angle like crazy between the two. He tr he's asking her out. The ending is also, again, a little bit more fantastical in this as compared to this. In this film, besides, you know, the whole male thing, which again makes more sense, the whole in God we trust thing, they go to see this house and it's for sale. And this is the house she, Susan wanted. And so um, both the her mother and uh, the lawyer who are falling in love, it's not out of the picture, it's just not played up as much. They decide to buy this house. In this film, which again, this makes far less sense, common sense here, they go to the house because it snowed and essentially Kris Kringle had given it, has given it to them already. Basically, um, she got a bonus because again, their store got money and her partner was pretty much it's like, we bought the house. So you now own the house. Makes no sense. Like you now own the house, it was up for sale. It's fully furnished. <laughs> you bought the house. In the original, it's empty. In the original, it's empty. The other thing that they do this one, they add this at the very end. Um, she asked Santa for a baby brother and it's implied that um, her mother is pregnant, which again makes absolutely no biological sense. So <laughs> she looks down at her stomach, it's like, did I just get pregnant? Um, yeah, considering her age in this, this film, um, unlikely because it looks like she's in her 30s and trust me it's not easy to get pregnant in your 30s because uh, she's a businesswoman. Uh, she, uh, ha she does have more power in this film. She's not messing with a boys club obviously it's in the 90s so they've updated it compared to the 40s where she's very much um, a single businesswoman um, and dealing with an old basically dealing with the boys club. This film is the newer film is obviously very different in that sense there's not as many women in it because it's the 40s in here. So that those are pretty much some of the major differences. The other major difference is when he's playing Santa Claus in this film, a little girl shows up who I believe speeches, speaks Dutch and she's just been adopted and um, he's able to speak to her. In this film, they use a girl who's deaf and basically the mother says it's like she, again, She's deaf, she just wanted to see you, and he's able to speak to her in both films. Um, though in this film, she actually is able to ask her something for Christmas. Um, and in this one, um, from the IMDb page, the translation essentially is she doesn't need anything for Christmas because she's been adopted. So that's very different. This one is far more wholesome and a whole lot more realistic. And it, this version that I have has been colorized. The original obviously was 1947, so it was in black and white. And there's some, a lot of traditionalists don't like the fact that it was colorized. Um, and then obviously this one, very different. There's a lot more action in this. Um, obviously it's in full color because it was done in 1994. There's more action, there's more conflict in here. And again, there's more romance. So 
and the whole the old um, in God we trust thing and the mother is falling in love with Chris Kringle anyway uh, opinion of the actors the adult actors do very well uh, Maya Wilson as a child actress was very good she's a very horrible human being as an adult but she was a good child actress which is the reason it was hard for me to watch this film particularly um, at this date um, so and I will explain that in a minute so both these films are decent um, at the moment I'm favoring this one <laughs> but I will explain that in just a moment this has to do with the timing of when I'm doing this video um, so both of them are decent films um, the guy who plays Santa Claus, the actors in this is the uh, this is the remake. So the main uh, actors in this are Chris, the late Richard Attenborough. So he plays Chris Kringle. The mother, uh, who is Dory Walker, is the name of the character, is Elizabeth Perkins, who's a well-known actress. Dylan McDermott is the lawyer. His name, his character's name is Brian Bedford. And then you have. Um, the boss of the opposite store, which is uh, J.D. Wells, she plays Ed Collins. Her boss is uh, C.F. Uh, William Winden, who's another well-known older actress, actor. And the judge is played by, um, Judge Harper is played by Robert Porsky, who I'm um, aware of. So, and then Susan Walker is played by Mara Wilson, who is a very well-known child actress. In the original, um, Edmund, Gwen, um, mispronouncing him, uh, plays Chris Kringle. Now, from what I can tell, he embodied Santa Claus. And she, the little girl who, Natalie Wood, um, thought he was Santa Claus until the very end, until she saw him at a cast party. So that was the name of the young girl, but her uh, actress who played Susan Walker was Natalie Wood. Um, Maureen O'Hara, as I said, played Doris Walker. Uh, the judge was played by Gene Lockhart. Again, I'm not as familiar with these actors. His name was Judge Harry X. Harper. Again, they played up the political angle of this one more. And Fred Galley was the name of the love interest and the lawyer. His, he was played by John Payne. And then, um, I do not know. And of course, there's a whole host of other actors that just don't correspond. So... Um, both of them are decent films. Again, the 47 film is more realistic. The modern film is more fantastical. Now, as of this moment, I, again, I am favoring this film. Why? Because this is being filmed on December 28th of 2021. And what's happened recently that I've only really just find out is Maya Wilson, um, as an adult, she hasn't acted in years, was friends with a YouTuber that I admire uh, by the name of Lindsay Ellis, who because in part Maya Wilson's bullying and bullying of YouTube um, and Twitter in particular, basically she's shutting down, she's getting off social media because she's been attacked. And Maya Wilson was instrumental in aggravating that specifically because they were friends and there were issues years ago when they were in school together and their friendship ended and she essentially became a massive bully and helped used her name essentially to amplify bullying attacks on this other human being. So my opinion as of late because this um, she recently went off all social media. She's a well-known um, author. Um, I definitely would check her out. Accents and is a fantastic science fiction film. I may, uh, science fiction book, I would cover it. But because I found this, this connection out relatively recently, and because Lindsay Ellis went off social media because she was being bullied, because this basically destroyed her mental health and possibly her physical health and essentially destroyed her life very much because of this these attacks my opinion of not necessarily this film but of the actress right here um is deteriorated now i enjoy the film as a whole but 
it's difficult to watch at this moment in time knowing that when this young girl grows up she becomes such a sadistic sadistic human being um so at the time i filmed matilda this year i didn't realize i didn't know the connection so i didn't realize the connection i'm not on twitter i was on twitter briefly but after the politics of 2020 i got off completely just because it was traumatizing to me so i didn't net recognize the connection so that's why i'm favoring the um original and the original is also it overall it's a much much better film the modern rendition is just a little bit louder and far for unreal far more unrealistic in some of its portrayals so and obviously macy's didn't like it they did they didn't want their name attached uh, their name attached to it so that is the reason i'm favoring the other film um i do not recommend having anything to do with following Maya Wilson. It's from what I can gather, her behavior was beyond inappropriate and she uh, helped destroy the life of another human being who, from what I've been able to read relatively recently, is having severe mental health issues. I wish her the best. This By the time this shows up, this will be like a year later. But hopefully she continues to write. Um, she was an inspiration to me. Um, she was one of the two YouTube tours that I started watching originally. So that again, it was hard to watch this film having just found this out and read what she posted and how horrible people had treated her. Primarily over a Twitter comment comparing an anime. So um, on that note, <laughs> end this video. Um, it's later than normally I film. But I wanted to get this done tonight so I could get return these book these DVDs to the library um, later this week. So I wanted to get it done and over with. So minus this stuff, please check out the rest of my channel. I do a lot of other film reviews. Um, I covered another Maureen O'Hara film um, with the Parent Trap. This is not my first comparison. I did a whole bunch of them earlier this year with other old classic Disney films that are not Christmas related. When I chose this, I did not realize what was going to happen obviously so and I just these films are kind of iconic and it's hard to find Christmas films that are uh, secular <laughs> so we're kind of stuck so um check out the rest of the channel I do a lot of family book reviews um film reviews all sorts of stuff comment if you have a positive one if you have a negative one I'll just delete and block you I, I don't have time for that I got a kid I'm just a mom I'm doing this for fun. So like and subscribe, check out what I've got. Um, and again, comment if you have a positive one. Thank you.